Are you living the life you want? Spending enough time with the ones you love? Welcome to the Real Estate of Mind show where you'll learn how becoming a successful real estate investor can change your life like it did ours. We're here to help you reach all of your goals and create wealth through real estate investing. So let's roll. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Real Estate of Mind show where your host, Glenn and Amber Schwarm. Hello, everybody. Where we help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing. Before we jump into our special guest today, I do want to make a plug out there. So that you know, our book hit Amazon. So if you're watching this on, of course, I'll see if I can make that show. If you can, if you can watch this, our book hit Amazon. So it's the birth of the everyday real estate investor, how real estate not stocks create wealth. Uh, it's a book that we worked on for about a year, year and a half, and that finally hit Amazon and it's been selling. So uh, we'd love to hey, go out there and have you grab a copy. Love to hear your reviews on that. So that was shameless self-promotion. Got to do it out of the gates. <laughs> got to get it out of the way. You know, got to get it out of there. So it's, uh, it's important. So. Well, look, as you guys know, we try to bring on guests that are very relevant to what we're doing in the industry and what's going on right now. And so I think this, uh, our next guest will be very relevant to us. And we'll be talking about some, uh, some lending and some conferences he has going on, some great stuff. So we have Mr. Derek Dombeck. Derek, how you doing, buddy? I'm awesome, Glenn. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're from a, one of your companies is Best REI Funding, right? And I know you do some, some lending, but tell, tell our listeners about yourself and what you do and where you're from and all that. Well, um, I'm from Wisconsin and, you know, being a business owner from the upper Midwest, it, it's, it's a little bit different, I think, than a lot of your listeners might encounter. We don't have the, the multi-million, you know, populations of the large cities. So we've always been a little bit different in that we, we conduct our business in a very large radius or large area. So our lending company, we, we lend hard money uh, throughout the state of Wisconsin our real estate acquisition company, we're buying in about a 200 mile um, diameter. Wow, that's a hike. That's a big right. Yeah. So, so we've we've gotten really good at at negotiating and talking to people over the phone, because I don't want to drive to somebody's property unless I'm 75 percent or more, you know, probable of actually getting it under contract. Sure. So that so that's a little different. Um, but you know, we, we came up like most people, we bought some fixer uppers back in the early two thousands. And, uh, and then ironically, as you and I were talking before we started recording, you know, where we're both living now, um, we had gotten into Florida real estate back in the mid two thousands done pretty well until the crash of 2007. And, uh, then, you know, basically lost everything. And, uh, we, we got forced into learning how to get creative, which was a blessing. I wish I would have started that way instead of being a, a slave to the banks, which yeah. is the way we did do it. Yeah. It's funny. I was looking, I, I keep an eye on Zillow. When we moved to Florida about a year and a half ago, and it was right when things were just at the top of the market. I mean, for, for months and months and months, I didn't see any, like no, no fixer uppers even were under 300. I'm like, man, you know, that just, the numbers don't even work for rentals at that price and whatever. So over the last couple of months, I've started to see prices go down, 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 down. And then yesterday I saw one come up and it was like 199. And I'm like, wait, 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 let me look at this one. What's up? What's up with this? Is it like burned out? Is it like a tear down or what? And it wasn't. But what caught my eye was um, as I was looking at the, the sales history of it, it sold in 2011 for like, I forget what it was now, $13,000 or something like that. And I'm here I am thinking, oh, it could be a good deal at $199. But then it was a little anticlimactic when I saw that they bought it for $13 a few years yeah. ago. So yeah. it's kind of funny. Crazy. So well, tell us what you do. So you, you, uh, you, when you say you buy real estate, are you buying and holding? Are you fixing and flipping? Are you wholesaling? Are you, what, what's kind of your, your thing? What do you do? It's all of the above. Um, for the most part, I, I don't have a lot of competition in anything creative in the upper Midwest. So very few people up here are doing subject to buying or options. Um, a combination of, of what I like to do is stack strategies, right? So I might buy something subject to might bring in some, a financial friend to put in the rehab money on a participating note, and then we'll lease option it to a, a tenant buyer on the backside. And, and I don't have a lot of competition in that. So I get a lot of referrals from other investors, realtors, attorneys to help solve those real estate challenges. Yeah. So, so Derek, that's, you, that's our niche. Can you explain to the listeners what subject to is? Because everybody may not know what that yeah. means. 
Yeah, buying a property, the deed will transfer to your name or to your trust or to however you want to do it. We do it with trusts. Um, the, the seller's debt will not be paid off. So you are taking over their payments on their behalf for them. But to be clear, you are not assuming their debt because an assumption of debt is completely different. And you're also not asking for permission from the lender because the lender will say no. And they do have a right to call that loan due. So um, we buy them using trusts for that reason. We do, you know, in our in our filling business, we've done we've done about a thousand deals in our lifetime, and we're we're uh, so we've done a lot. We've got it's certainly a handful of subject twos. Done a lot of subject twos in short term scenarios to buy and sell. We do have one that I can think of. We have a two family that we've held for six seven years now. That's on a subject two. Do you find you're doing a lot of longer term, shorter term subject twos combination? Um, two to three years is what I like to have to get my, my lease option, my end buyer into the property. So yeah. most of my sub twos have lasted, you know, two, three, four years. Yeah. Um, and, and if they last longer, that's great. And it's, it's fun for me right now, Glenn, because everybody's complaining about the bank rates and, and, you know, interest rates, where are they going to stop? I don't care. I don't use banks. So yeah. If I can go buy somebody's loan, or I'm sorry, go buy somebody's property subject to their loan at two and a half, three percent fixed for the next 30 years, where we live in the upper Midwest, I can still cash flow a good majority of those properties, even with very little equity. So it's a huge opportunity for for me and for anybody else that's looking at it that way. Yeah. It's it's interesting that you brought up earlier that you're not affected like by the same stuff that the big cities are. We we were in a similar pocket in Albany in that, you know, in 2007, 2008, we still that was when we started and we did very very well then because those the prices weren't as affected as like, you know, Silicon Valley and Las Vegas and Florida and you know those those places where the prices were just sky high. What do you see happening this time around now that, you know, the recession is hitting? Do you have you noticed a change? in your area? Well, that's where it's interesting being lenders because we're lending statewide and we're lending in areas that we don't necessarily buy. So like Milwaukee, for example, um, our company's based out of Green Bay. Milwaukee's a little over two hours south. So we don't personally buy anything in Milwaukee, but I'm doing all the BPOs for all of our loans that are going out the door which on an average month is- define, We know what it is, but define BPO, so broker's price opinion, to, to just define that for the listeners if you wouldn't mind. So yes, doing a broker's price opinion um, versus getting an appraisal done. When, when we issue a hard money loan because of our experience and our hard money lending company came to, to fruition because we raised, always raised private money for our own deals post 2007 because banks wouldn't touch us. And um, so we got to a point where we had more money available than we had deals and we didn't want to lose our investors. So my business partner, Jeff and I, you know, we started an arbitrage lending company. And to this day, we do not have any institutional backing. Everybody that, that funds our loans are real people that we can have real conversations with. We don't sell off our loans. So that I say all that to lead to this when we're doing our underwriting for our loans, I don't want to trust some appraiser that got four or $500 to give us a number. Yeah. You know, we're, we're doing our own underwriting. I'm doing the, the final BPO or the final valuation on each loan, which gives us a really good pulse of what's happening around our state. Because not every loan that gets applied for gets, you know, we, we don't fund all of them, right? Some of them we have to turn down. And it's because I'm watching average days on market and I'm watching what things are selling for in the last 30 days versus six months ago, um, comparing that. And, and so many of these flippers and these landlords are coming to us with comps that are a year old, six months old. Yeah. And, and then they, they get, you know, honestly, they get butt hurt when we're either turning down the loan or we're saying you have to bring more cash to the deal because they still have these these this belief system that the market's not changed yet or it's not going to change you know they, they've got blinders on and i'm here to tell you and your audience i've got the t-shirt you know i got my butt kicked in 2007 i lost almost everything it's yeah. changing and there's huge opportunity if you know what to look for yeah but 
Um, so I'm seeing average days on market now is going 30 to 45 days where four months ago it was a week. Um, don't you feel like, Derek, don't you feel like the market in a lot of ways is just kind of going back to a sense of normal, what it was three, oh. four years ago? As opposed, but people that, that started a couple of years ago, you know, we've had, we've had some guests on. We try and have guests on to have some experience like us because sometimes the people that are, people have been in business for four, three, four years, they have no idea what real estate investing really is. This is just because, no. you know, we always say to people, look, what we do is hard work, but it's worth it, right? That's a common thing that we say. And as we teach our students, we put, we put on a home flipping workshop. We do what once every five or six weeks. And we, we have hundreds of people that come to them. It's a, it's a great experience. But I always say, listen, if you're looking for a get rich quick scheme, you're in the wrong spot. And in the past few years, there's been a lot of people that have made a lot of screw ups and made a lot of money. Yep. And I, don't, I think that now more than ever, you've got to have coaching. Now more than ever, you've got to have guidance. You got to know what you're doing because, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of money and a big opportunity. But there's also a lot of pitfalls right now that, you know, the the rising tide is not going to cover. It's going to drown people. You know, well, you have to know how to ride those cycles because real estate has and always will be cyclical. So you yeah. have to know how to make money in any market. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting, Glenn and Amber, because I, I mentioned to you earlier before we were recording, um, I host three national mastermind groups at this point. And so we, I purposely don't allow people from my own area into these masterminds because we want everybody to be, you know, very vulnerable and, and just open up, right. And help each other. But that's also helping me see, cause I have members from, gosh, I think we're at like 10 or 11 different States now. Right. So I know what's going on in Idaho, California, Ohio, you know, Florida, Georgia, all these things. And all these people are experienced. I mean, there's, there's zero newbies in my masterminds and some of them are having some, some struggles right now with experience so the the people that are coming into this brand new or, or two years in the business where same thing if if you found a deal and you were able to get it on the market you made money you you did not have to have any knowledge whatsoever you made money i i don't want to upset anybody listening to this podcast but i i love this part of the cycle where we get rid of yeah. The, the realtors that popped up just because it was easy to get a license and the, you know, the, the non-professionals, it's time the, to weed them the out. Realtors, the realtors that turned into investors because they, they found a deal, they start doing that. Right. So yeah, all that. Yeah. yeah. It's going right. to weed out a lot of people that don't have the aptitude for it. Yeah. Yep. Which, which I think is good for us, right? The professional, it's good for the professionals. And even, even, you know, we teach what we do at our workshops and, and our whole, our whole mission really is helping people get started. And so we, but, I, but even that, I don't want everybody doing it, right? We, we're mm -hmm. at our workshops. We say, look, this is not for everybody. We want people that understand this is a business. It's a great business, but it's going to take work. It takes risk. You know, it takes that. In the past couple of years, that hasn't been the case. You know, and so we, we had people come in going, ah, I can make money. Like, okay, you might now, but that's not, we want the serious people. You, you know, that's, can. You just got to know the right way to do it. Yeah. You just got to know where, where to spend your time. So tell people how you... Um, when you, when you do your lending now, do you look for other investors to lend with you to, so you lend money out or do you have that max and you're just looking for poor people that can anybody apply with you? There are certain States they have to be in. What's, how does that work? So from our, our actual in-house hard money lending, we do it within the state of Wisconsin. State of Wisconsin. We do. Yes. We can get people funded in other States. Um, so, and it, it's through an affiliate, you know, broker that we work with, sure. um, and I'm kind of caught off guard because I don't want to tell you exactly which states because uh, I'm not. No, no worries, no worries. But um, that, yeah, okay. No, but yeah, they could certainly reach out to us. And as far as our funding is concerned, I mean, we are always raising money. That will never stop. The reality is, um, when you're privately funded, it, it's how do I put this? It's a game of Tetris, right? If you take in too much money and yeah. you can't get it on the street, well, that's not great. If you have too many applications and you don't have enough money, that's not great. So yeah. it's a constant battle of what's coming in, what loans are paying off, what applications are in, what's going out the door. Um, yeah, we, and we we've had that battle over the years too. There we have, you know, we we have either, we all year, for the past you know fifteen years we have too much too many houses or too much money. We always have too many houses, too much money, right? right. Balance that right with the we have private lenders for all of our stuff too. We don't we don't farm it out, but we are but that's what we do. So. And, and it's a good problem, but it it's still a problem. Like it, it, you know, so 
So yes, we we have money, you know, that comes in and that invests into our fund. So we have a, you know, SEC regulated fund. And, uh, you know, we pay our investors 9%. We lend it out at 12. Yeah, um, yeah. And it's an arbitrage business. Sure. So it, it works really well. It's secure to the degree that everything is, is you know, backed by first position mortgages. We, sure. we lend at 70% of after repair value. Yeah. Uh, and I think where we're a little bit different is because we're still acquiring our own assets, we're still flipping, we're still buying properties. We have an extremely low default rate because yeah. we look at our borrowers as our partners to a degree where if they have a challenge, we're here to help them through that challenge yeah. versus many lenders who just, you know, originate the, the paper, sell the paper off, or even if they keep it, they, they're actively not still in the acquisition game. So usually it's just like, well, okay, sorry, borrower, you screwed up. Give me the property. Yeah. You know, to us, the last thing we want is the property. Right. Yeah. But if we have to take the property, we take it out of one company, put it in the other company, finish it, liquidate it, and move on. Yeah. So we've had we've had uh, less than a dozen foreclosures in in the 10 years that we've been really actively lending. And yeah hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of loans yeah um but where do you see where do you see the market heading now i, I tell everybody i say you know right right now we're in a we're in a push pull right we're in a buy you know it's it's converting from a seller's market to a buyer's market but we're not there yet nobody you know, wants to still, give in. nobody wants to give in right it's all okay. it's kind of like landlock but it, you know eventually just it's it's got to happen just the way things are happening and then we're watching all kinds of layoffs and we're seeing the recession start to show early signs of settling in here. And I'm curious what you're, you've been around for a long time. Tell us what you think is going to happen. None of us have a crystal ball. We all know that. But what do you, what do you think? What do you think? Um, I, I think there's going to be a lot more people that suffer than, than what the mass media wants us to believe. The mass media says, well, yes, rates are going up, but there's still a housing shortage. There's not enough units. And, and they've been spewing that nonsense for quite some time. Yeah. That is that is not untrue, but the way they're spinning it makes it seem like it's way more positive than it is. To me, anybody that's employed has a certain dollar amount they can they can spend. And housing prices, because there's a shortage going up the way they did, um, it, it gets to a plateau, and we got to that plateau. and And I I think they should have raised rates two years sooner. Yeah. I don't think they did it because of COVID, but I think they should have and slow this down because we, we now it's this massive drop off the cliff instead of what could have been a gradual curve back down. Yeah. Um, so I think we're going to see an increase in foreclosures. Ironically, after 2007, eight, nine, the government stepped in and said, we can't have any of these, you know, these loans that are so aggressive, these negative amortization loans and, and, you know, the stuff that, you know, greatly caused the, the last great recession. But the government turned around and did the same thing. You know, they they really ramped up FHA and, and USDA and VA and all these government insured loans with zero to three and a half percent down. At the price points we had, people overpaid and now they can't afford to get out of their houses if they have to move for any reason. Yeah. And so I think foreclosures are going to be on the rise again, great buying opportunity. Yeah. We can go in and take those properties subject to. Yeah. But um, I do think rates will stabilize in 2023, probably stabilize somewhere around the 6% towards the tail end of 2023. And ultimately for me, I, I have been waiting for this opportunity for about five years. I think we're going to pick up a lot of assets that are going to be decent properties. Yeah. And um and our clients will too. But long story short, I don't have a crystal ball. Um, <laughs> I, those of us that have been in this game for a long enough time to see market shifts, we we can see kind of the tail end of the movie better than than the wholesalers that jumped in and you know are, are, have been making these ridiculously high wholesale fees the last one or two or three years. Yeah, we're, we're part of a big mastermind. You know, I got guys in there that, you know, their their average rip was 50 grand on a wholesale. That's just, you know, someone making 90 grand, 100 grand on a rip. I'm like, mm -hmm. so the, 
the, where we where we do our business in upstate New York, and that's in the capital region of New York. It's a small little pocket, like Amber said. It's a, it's a unique economy there. It's the capital of New York, and it's not New York City. Everybody thinks New York's one big city, but it's not. So it's uh, <laughs> we're from we're from a very different spot than the New York City, and so it's you know we we are one of those areas that didn't get massive appreciation. It had appreciation, certainly everything mm -hmm. went up, but it wasn't insane. You know, we we had some we had some wholesale rips that were. 70 and 50 and 40 mostly about 20 on average you know and, mm -hmm. and now they're dropping down of course because the market's dropping it's all it's all adjusting which is normal but it's you know we also aren't going to have that big loss like a lot of people in the, in the bigger cities you know i mean the bigger cities are going to have that kind of stuff i think the majority of the country we're going to settle down to some kind of a normal i don't think we're going to drop off a cliff i don't think you know i think again that it, there's certain areas that will no question about it the people mm -hmm. that had mass appreciation again are going to come down you know, we're watching, like Amber said, here in Florida, we're watching the numbers drop a lot around us. We're watching going, hmm, interesting. How interesting. We were fortunate enough to buy, we went under contract in January of 21, right before the massive spike that was going on here. So like, mm -hmm. as we're under contract, it's just going up. We're like, holy crap. So it was crazy, but yeah, nuts. Well, listen, tell me what you have a conference call, I think, too, you mentioned you want to talk about. Yeah, so it's called the Generations of Wealth, and it's going to be late February, February 27th, I believe it is, um, 2023 in Cancun, Mexico. And the way this came about, we we went to on a conference um, at sea for about seven of its eight years. And a few years ago, the people that were hosting that, um, one of which is now in your area, uh, in St. Pete area, uh, Peter Fortunato, good friend of mine, um, they, you know, we're retiring. They're like, we're, we're not going to keep hosting this. And, and they encouraged us otherwise known as voluntold us that we needed to keep this thing going voluntold like yes that. so um that that also happened to be when covid hit that was great timing yeah so we ended up having the our, our conference in orlando last year or well i guess it was still this calendar year but this last winter and we're going to mexico again the premise of it is the five-day conference these these are advanced topics um not that newer people can't come, but just know that it's 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 advanced. Yeah. And you know, my speakers that I bring in, they're not pitching from the stage. This is not a pitch fest at all. Yeah. Uh, I encourage people to do business with each other as long as they vet each other. Yeah. But we have conference from nine until one each day, and then heavily, you know, invested in networking with each other from uh, one o'clock through dinner time. And then we come back in the evenings with these uh, town hall sessions, more interactive instead of just listening to a lecture. Um, so five days of that at an all-inclusive resort in Cancun. The other reason it's called Generations of Wealth, I really encourage people to bring their kids. Mm. Um, your kids, especially 10 through 17, can sit in on anything they want as much or as little as they want. There's no additional charge for that. So at our last conference, we had about 18 kids total. We had about a dozen that sat in and they were in on almost every session. Nice. Um, it's, it's really great for my kids and everybody's kids. And, and the point of this is not for them to learn real estate. The point is for them to do what I didn't do early on. And that was build a network. So yeah. they're building a network of other kids who have parents that are freaks like us that just don't conform. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and it's really and around different people and different thought processes and you, you it, it just puts them on a different trajectory yeah it's it's awesome and my friends from georgia um their two daughters are, i believe are 16 and 19 at this point the two of them combined i think have five or six houses that they own That's i mean awesome. that they own um short-term vacation rental type of stuff cash flowing i mean it was fun to hear the stories of of you know, when they were going to school and their teachers were, were giving them a hard time and, and they're like, um, I actually cash flow more than you make annually, <laughs> you know? Um, but that's who I want my kids hanging around. And, yeah. uh, and it's, it's just become such a tight community. This is not a huge event. I mean, 125, 150 people is, is really what it's designed to be. Yeah. And, uh, We'd love to have any of your listeners or yourselves, if it's something that interests you, um, you can just check out the website, gowvoyage.com. Gowvoyage.com, okay. Yep. And, um, you know, there, there is 
this is not a sales pitch by any means. There's a limited block of what I was able to reserve at that resort. Sure. When it's filled, I can't guarantee that I can get more. Yeah. Right. You know, it's just the reality of using an all-inclusive. And, and our goal is to get it back on a cruise ship, um, <laughs> mostly for logistics purposes and for our own sanity as the hosts. Yeah, yeah right. But for right now, it's 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 still on land. That's that's, that's that sounds great, that Derek. Sounds yeah, great. we're... We're big believers in mastermind and being around like-minded people. It's such a different, it's such a game changer when you can, you know, even through a market change like this, you can have conversations to say, so what's happening in your market? Where, where are you at? What are you doing? How are you, how are you, how are you doing this? How are you navigating this? Because sometimes, you know, as you know, somebody gives you an idea and you go, well, hell, I never thought about that. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Great idea. You know, sometimes you have a, you just be, you know, having a cup of coffee in the morning or having a beer with somebody at night and they, they throw something across that's common to them and it's not, and you're like, Wait, back up. What? Iron sharpens yeah, iron. Yeah, all of a sudden you hear an idea and you're like, oh, it totally takes you in a whole different direction, right? So it's such a such an important thing to invest in yourself with these kind of things for sure. Yeah, and it's fun for me. I, you know, just jumping on a podcast like you guys host is great because we get to interact and, and pop those ideas for each other too. Yeah. You know, and, and sure. I was on one uh, a couple of days ago and we were talking about creative deal structuring. And, and I mentioned that when I put an option in place, I secure my options with a mortgage. And most people do not understand that. I, I've gone round and round with attorneys on this. And it's fun for me because anytime I can school an attorney, yeah. um, you know, I have a PhD, a public high school diploma. Yeah. So it's a, it's a lot of fun for me to, you know, educate this person that spent a lot of money trying yeah. to educate it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What's the best way for people to find you, Derek? Um, so I'm going to give you my personal email address. If you wouldn't mind putting that in the show notes, it's my first name, Derek, uh, D E R E K at best R E I funding.com. And guys, anybody that sends me an email and tells me they heard me on, on your show, um, I'm currently authoring a book. It'll be published hopefully January. Um, and I'm co authoring another book with a, a great group of people um the, you guys ever hear of jim Rohn? oh yeah oh, sure of course okay J jim Rohn's uh business partner kyle wilson is uh heading up this project that i'm co-authoring so he oh. asked me to to be you know an author in there so i'm going to give away both of those books electronic version to your listeners they just shoot me an email say i heard you on on glenn and amber's show and as soon as they're published you know, and I got the electronic version. I'll just blast it out to everybody for nothing. That's awesome. Great, great offer. That's awesome. We appreciate that. Yeah. Cool. Well, good stuff, man. Well, listen, we appreciate you coming on today. You got a lot going on. The market's crazy right now. We're all kind of, I think all of us are kind of gearing up for something that we think is going to be great in the next six months or so. And mm -hmm. we're excited about it. So I know we're all, we're all knuckling down. So I appreciate you taking the time to be here. And uh, you guys make sure you check, check out Derek and send him an email. We'll have it in the, in the notes here. And Check out the conference or get the book and all kinds of great stuff. So like, like Amber said, iron sharpens iron. Yep. So, all right. Thanks and so much, Derek. Yeah. Thanks so much for being here, man. We really appreciate it. Thank you. It's been an honor. All right, everybody. We'll see you on the next episode of the Real Estate of Mind Show. Make sure you like and subscribe and leave us a review and leave us your questions and comments and we will personally answer and please share it to anyone you think could benefit. You can find us all over social media at Glenn and Amber Swarm. We'll see you next week.